I've been watching uh, today as uh, various speakers have come to the floor, and, and I want to just join in the outrage about what has happened over there at the IRS. Uh, the idea that the IRS would pick specific groups and target them. In this case, apparently, they used uh, the name Patriot, and they searched through incoming applications for these 501c4s. They used the term Tea Party, uh, and they were obviously focusing on one side of the political spectrum. They shouldn't have done that. And, they, and, they, and there's no doubt the people that are writing me, the people that uh, in America have watched this, uh, feel a sense of outrage. And they should be outraged. They're outraged. I'm outraged. Uh, and one of the things we have to understand as a result of this is that the IRS has tremendous power. It has the power to audit. It has the power to request information. It has the power to refer uh, for criminal conduct. Um, I think in many cases the IRS is probably more feared uh, than, than prosecutors' office. Uh, prosecutors' offices who also have tremendous power. And as many know, uh, I've had some real experience there, being a federal prosecutor, being a state attorney general. That's power that should be used uh, in, in, a, in a very, very careful way. And you don't pick one part of the political spectrum and target people uh, when you're entering a phase of, of a prosecution or an audit uh, as the IRS was doing. And I think our president, uh, who is a lawyer, understands that. Uh, and President Obama has called for the top IRS official's resignation. And, and that official has resigned, and that is the right thing to do. Such action is inexcusable. No one disputes that. More disciplinary action is likely. The FBI is investigating, and I hope they do a full, thorough, and complete investigation. And of course, as I said before, the IRS should not be targeting specific sides of the political spectrum. But you know, in thinking about this, there's another failure here, and we should talk about that at the same time. The IRS does not have clear rules for nonprofit groups and political activity. We need transparency about what is allowed and what is not allowed. And those rules should be applied to all groups across the board on all sides of the political spectrum. Front groups for huge amounts of campaign money are continually allowed to file false statements with the IRS and get away with it. Over and over again, they do this. This is wrong. Whether the group is liberal or conservative, Democrat or Republican, this is wrong across the board. How did this happen? We know that lots of secretive groups want to funnel cash to influence elections to get their candidates elected. But campaign finance rules are supposed to have transparency. How do these groups, left or right, keep their money secret? They hide behind an organization that's listed with the IRS called a 501c4. They ask for permission under the IRS to be a 501c4 status organization. This is a tax-exempt, nonprofit corporation regulated by the IRS. These groups have one big hurdle to jump through. The 501c4 has to be set up for, and I quote now, for the promotion of social welfare, end quote. In fact, the law says it must be exclusively, the law that Congress wrote says it must be exclusively for social welfare. So that's the law Congress wrote Seems pretty clear, doesn't it? Seems, seems like uh, Congress was saying what it intended here. But the IRS muddied the water by deciding exclusively actually means primarily. Primarily engaged in social welfare activity means at least 51% of the time. Not 100% of the time, 51% of the time. To me, this is baffling and it is completely misguided. 
But to make it more confusing, the IRS regulations state that the promotion of social, social welfare does not include direct or indirect participation or intervention in political campaigns on behalf or in opposition to any candidate for public office. To establish a 501c4 corporation, the organizers must file a form with the IRS, pledging that they do not plan to spend money to influence elections. It appears that many of these groups have lied on their applications for nonprofit status. And it also appears they are allowed to get away with it. That is corrupt, and it is also a crime. And nothing appears to be done about it. That is a scandal right there. As the IRS stands by, as these groups, whatever their political affiliation, mock federal tax laws. The Center for Responsive Politics noted that in 2000, the 2012 election, 501c4 groups spent $254 million to support or oppose candidates. So why would someone donate to a 501c4 instead of giving money to the parties or to the campaigns of candidates they support? Simple, to avoid disclosure, to avoid disclosure. If someone gives $1,000 to a political campaign, that is required to be reported, and the donor is known. It's out there. It's in the public. But if you give $1,000 to a 501c4, that money is improperly engaging in, physical, in political activity, and the public remains in the dark. So if you give $1,000 to a 501c4, Nobody knows about it, but it can go out under these rules and engage in political activity. This secret money is a bipartisan outrage. They are seeking to influence elections, not promote social welfare. This has to change. I have long argued that it must change since 2010. Many of us has, have come to this floor calling for vitally needed reforms, demanding that we change the way we do business here. I believe that requires a constitutional amendment overturning the disastrous Buckley and Citizens United decisions by the Supreme Court, restoring to Congress and the states the authority to regulate elections. We have also pushed for the Disclose Act. That legislation would have taken the IRS out of the business of investigating these groups, a job it is failing to do anyway. It would have required open reporting with the Federal Election Commission. The Disclose Act doesn't ban any group, but it does say the American people have the right to know who is trying to influence their vote, who is paying for all those ads on television. There's a saying in Washington from the Watergate era, follow the money, follow the money. That's what I'm trying to do. Where does the money come from? And where is the money going? Not a single Republican voted for the Disclose Act. Not one. In fact, they filibustered it, blocked it from an up or down vote. Partisan bias and abuse by the, IRA, by the IRS cannot be tolerated. President Obama is not tolerating it. But Americans are also fed up with the deception by shadowy groups that continue to drown our elections in anonymous cash. The fact that these secret political money groups also serve as tax breaks for extremely wealthy people adds insult to injury. We need clear rules from the IRS. Exclusive means exclusive in my book. Exclusive means exclusive. When the Congress says exclusive, it means exclusive. And we need to enforce those rules equally on all applicants for the tax-exempt status, every single one. If you are a charity or a true social welfare organization, you should not pay taxes. There's no need to publicize your donors. But if you're looking to influence American votes and how Americans vote, the voters should know who you are. There must be disclosure at the very least. In closing, I will say, we have to change the way we do business. The failure of IRS bureaucrats, billionaires writing political checks but hiding in the shadows 
and avoiding taxes, this has to change. The time has come to change this. Thank you, Mr. President, and I yield the floor.